Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, one of the problems that we deal with when we're trying to discuss things with flat earthers is they always demand proof that the earth is a sphere. Well, fine. Here's a picture from 1972 that shows the earth is a sphere, and it's taken from the Apollo command capsule in space. Oh, well, that's all CGI. Well, here's a picture of the curve. CGI. How do you tell whether or not a photograph is actually evidence? Now, here I have a rotating Earth animation on my intro screen. Everybody knows that this is an animation. Nobody seriously thinks that this is an actual picture of the Earth rotating at that speed. And by the way, if the Earth was rotating at that speed, we'd all be weightless up to about Florida. So, how do you tell whether or not a photograph is good evidence? Well, my friend Planar Walk down in New Zealand had a really interesting discussion on this the other day, and I'd like to highlight his video. So let's all enjoy this rainbow unicorn kitten with butterfly wings. Cue up the music and have a listen to Planar Walk. <laughs> Hoi hoi, I'm Planet Walk, and something that a lot of flat earthers do is they ask for proof that water can stick to the bottom of a spinning ball. And so I'll show them photos from Himawari. And the immediate response to that is, well, those photos are fake. If I showed you a photo of a unicorn, does that mean that unicorns exist? But you also have flat earthers that want video evidence of stuff. Never mind that video is just a whole lot of photos. But then there's also flat earthers that want video evidence of curvature. And when you show them video evidence of curvature, they say, well, that's just a fisheye lens. So the question here is, are photos and videos an acceptable form of evidence? And it's not just a simple yes or no answer. Take, for example, this video that you're watching right now. Is it evidence that I exist? Now, one could argue that it's not evidence at all because it's just a bunch of photos and sound waves. But that ignores something that really helps when you're trying to come to a conclusion about something. Context. Now, the first bit of context is how realistic do I look? I think I look pretty realistic. However, that can be explained with CGI. CGI can make some pretty realistic looking people as well. So what about my voice? What about me saying stuff? Well, there's always the possibility that an AI exists that can replicate people's voices. Now, if there was no other context, you could conclude that I don't exist. But there is more context. So the other context is I've been on quite a few live streams. I've been on my own live streams. I've been on Team Skeptics live streams. I've been on the Silly Shields show. I've been on Fight the Flat Earths live streams. Now that would be incredibly difficult to fake because you would need to have someone generating responses on the fly. Not to mention another bit of context, cost. It would cost a lot of money to have a CGI version of me that looks and talks exactly like me. It would be a hell of a lot cheaper to either A, have a person talking to a camera like what you're seeing, or B, just have a stick figure that I do a voiceover for. The amount of context around the existence of myself means that I probably exist. There's no reason to think that I don't exist. So let's apply this to possible photos of unicorns. So how difficult would it be to fake a photo of a unicorn? Pretty easy. All you have to do is stick a horn on a horse and you're done. If I had a hoi ho and a horn, I'd be able to do that pretty easily. Also, hoi ho is Tereo for horse. Now, it is possible that you could add further context to an image of a unicorn. It's just that it's very easy to fake an image of a unicorn. Now, how about something a little more difficult? How about an image of a dragon? That has been done. Game of Thrones has heaps of images of dragons. But the context of that is they generally don't appear outside of the media that they're in. So what do I mean by this? Well, if dragons actually existed, you would have people that are independent of Hollywood going and looking for dragons and finding them and taking photos or videos of them. These photos and videos would end up on places like YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, Imgur. Another bit of context is that the people that make these shows aren't trying to say, hey look, these dragons actually exist in the real world. They actually show them creating the dragons. So let's move on to the Himawari photos, the ones that flat earthers like to claim are all CGI. So it would actually be surprisingly difficult to fake these photos because 
people have gone ahead and verified that the weather patterns seen within these photos are correct. So this means that if you were to try and fake the Himawari photos, it means that you would have to gather weather data from weather stations in New Zealand, Australia, China, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, and Indonesia, and a few other places as well. Good luck getting the North Koreans to agree to give you their weather data. Now not only would there be a lot of cost involved, there would be a lot of work that would have to be done to make sure that these images have nothing wrong with them. Now whilst that may not seem like a big challenge, keep in mind that they have the luxurious amount of time of 10 minutes to get each image done. It takes me about an hour to create static clouds on a ball and blender and that's not even trying to animate them. And just to add a little bit more to that, Himawari has discovered forest fires before anybody knew about those fires. I have a hard time believing that the images from Himawari are fake because just saying CGI doesn't really explain all that context. In fact, I think that it's even more likely that I'm CGI than the images from Himawari are, and that's coming from someone that knows that he's not CGI. Well, to the extent of which I can observe, it could be that this is all just a simulation and what I'm seeing is generated by a computer, in which case everything would be CGI. Now what about the claim of high altitude footage that shows a curve is just fisheye lens? Now we do know that fisheye lens can indeed cause straight lines to appear curved, but how? So if you look at any fisheye lens, any straight line that's above the centre of the image will be curved upwards like that. Any line that is below the centre of the image will be curved downwards like that. And the further away from the centre of the image that the line gets, the more that these curves will be exaggerated. So that means if a supposedly straight line dips below the centre of the image and is still curved upwards, I have bad news for you. That line is not straight. So there we go. You can use images for evidence. It just all depends on the context of that image. Now I get that the Flat Earthers will still be arguing, ah, the Himawari satellite photos are fake. CGI. And if you want to argue that, please give me a good argument as to why I am not CGI. Because if the Himawari satellite photos are CGI, then pretty much any photo can be CGI. A major weakness of the Flat Earth movement, if you want to call it that, is they like to come up with some sort of a catchphrase that somebody tells them about. For example, second law of thermodynamics, all photos from space are CGI. The horizon rises to eye level. But they fail to follow through on that. Can we have CGI photographs? Of course. Does that mean that the Apollo moon landing photographs are CGI? No. Could they be? Maybe. But you still have to prove that they actually are CGI in order to claim that they are CGI. The other thing that is illogical in the, in the Flat Earth movement is that they claim that, say, composite photographs are CGI and therefore can't be used. What do you think a composite photo is? It's a series of photos of a real-life scene that are put together to give a larger scene. You can do this on your iPhone using the panoramic setting on your camera. You just basically click the shutter, move the camera across the horizon, the camera itself puts all the pictures together and gives you one long picture. This is not CGI in, in the sense that it's something that is faked. It's real, it's just processed. So there's a difference between a processed photograph, such as the blue marble photograph, which is enhanced and colorized and things like that, and something that's just an outright fake, like my picture of the uh, rainbow unicorn kitten with butterfly wings. That was clearly put together on Photoshop. That's not evidence. Nobody's putting that forward as evidence. Just like this animation of the globe is not used as evidence of what the Earth actually is. The Apollo 17 blue marble photo is because it's a film camera photo that has providence. It is good evidence. This is not. Now on this channel, I strive to only use real photographic evidence, things that actually do represent life and can be used as evidence of a, an argument that I'm making. 
So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. Hit the bell icon so you know when my videos come out. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stop by and pay Planner Walk a visit. Maybe give him a like and a subscribe. He does good work down there, and he's a relatively small channel. Like I said, he's a very insightful young man, and I enjoy listening and watching his videos. So take care, everyone, and thank you again for stopping by.